everyone. Welcome to episode 213, Triple H Parenting. Meet our mom, Kelly Hutchison. She is a life coach. She is a child counselor. She is a teacher. She's a parent coach. And she's a mom to us. She will teach you to stop yelling at your kids. She will teach you to get your kids to listen. She will teach you how to never sleep with mommy guilt again. She will teach you how to be an imperfect mom. So you can help your kids be imperfect too. And And have have harmony in the home. So you know I love acronyms. I love funny titles. I love taking something really simple and giving it a funny name or a funny title. And all of a sudden it's like a game. Like when we were playing, when we were in first grade, well, when I was teaching first grade, I wasn't in first grade. We'd say, oh, let's play the, the, um, the quiet game. And they're like, what's that? I'm like, you sit on your desk and you see who can be the most quiet. And the first one to talk has to sit in their chair. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like right before the bell is about to ring and I needed like three minutes to, to kill. All of a sudden you turn it into a game. But if you tell kids to be quiet, they're like, what? Okay. Yeah, we'll be quiet. Sure we will. So whenever you want to turn anything to a game, the kids are total buy-in. So I feel like we're all little kids. So when I call something Triple H Parenting, you're like, oh my gosh, I have to find out the latest and greatest. Now, this is something that I heard on TikTok. So it's not like this is something I read in a science book about parenting. And Triple H Parenting, I heard from Jay Alderton, which I've never heard of before. I went to his TikTok and he had a good billion followers. So apparently I am not in the loop. And he said it, he was on a episode as a guest on another TikToker who had a billion followers who I'd never heard of. And his name was Sahil Bloom. S-A-H-I-L. And the last name is Bloom. And he was a he had a guest on whose name was Jay Alderton. A-L-D-E-R-T-O-N. And it was one of those things that I heard. And of course, TikTok, I don't know, like sometimes they're three minutes, but a lot of times they're like seven seconds. And it's that seven seconds you're like, whoa. This is an episode. It needs to be an episode immediately. I literally heard it like a couple days ago and it's already an episode. That's how excited I was when I heard it. And I've used it and it helps. And I've used it on people in my life, but I've also taught people in my life to use it with me. And you can, and I read an article and it was about how to use this with animals. I'm like, oh my goodness, we're just like our dogs. If I could be more like my dog, my life would be so much easier. And if people in my life could be more like my dog, my life would be so much easier. <laughs> just kidding, but not really. But they just exude unconditional love, which we all do as well. And so the simple question, when someone is agitated, they're upset, they're overwhelmed, they're crying. This is good with kids when they're upset or during calm waters after they've just calmed down. And you're kind of like, because a lot of times some kids, when they're in the red zone, asking them questions just agitates them even more. But some kids like that kind of talking, so to speak. So you have to kind of know your kid and know what they like and what they don't like. And if they're the type of kid that needs to be left alone and wants to be left alone, make sure you clarify that and find that out during calm waters. So that looks like after a tantrum or after a meltdown, which they're going to have no matter what age they are, they're still going to have them. Don't expect them ever to go away. That's not the goal of parenting. The goal of parenting is to have them have as many as they possibly can so you can teach them about emotional regulation by seeing what emotions they struggle with. See how this is a lesson for them, but it's also a lesson for for us as well. Because emotions are tough, y'all. They're tough for me and I'm pushing 40. I'm sorry. Typo. I wish I was pushing 40. I'm pushing 50 and they're hard for me. And the more that I'm allowing myself to feel, the more I'm like, dang, I've suppressed a lot of emotions a long time. So he said something very simple. And he was talking about being a good spouse. And he said, this really works well when my wife is upset. And he said, and she's going off and she's like, and then this happened and then this happened. And then then he said this and then she said this. And then it could be something that's happening in their personal life, something that's happening at work, something that's happening with the kids. And he said, I just ask her, do you want to be heard, helped? or hugged. And I think he said in a different order. I think he said helped, heard, hugged. Does it matter? No. You decide which order you want it in. There is no right way. Now, if you are worried about what the right way is, then just know that's probably a pattern that you're looking for just the right things to say and do it just the right way. You might've been someone who wanted to get straight A's as a kid. I'm just guessing. 
And that's when you need to turn into your own inner voice, know that you're a grown woman, grown man, and you know your inner wisdom is already there and you don't have to ask for anyone's approval, permission, or sequence of how to say it. Because no matter how you say it, it's always going to be the right way. Then that's where perfect parenting comes in. We're going for B minus, baby. Even if you only remember two of the three, do you want to be heard or helped? Sometimes if the kids are going off about something, I'm like, do you want me to listen or do you want me to offer some unsolicited advice? So this is kind of like the same concept. Do you want to be heard, helped, or hugged? Now, what does that mean? Heard means, do you just want to vent and go crazy and like just get it all out? Because a lot of times after I vent and I get it all out, sometimes I'll vox like Char or Michelle and I'll be like, and then this happened, this happened. I'm like, oh my, and Voxer is one way audio and I will literally get it all out and I'll feel so much better. And they hadn't even heard the message yet. It's a one way walkie talkie if you guys have Voxer. It's like voice memos or it's like on Telegram if you're on Telegram. It's like leaving a voicemail for someone. After the voicemail, you feel so much better because you just got it all out and you kind of, when you're getting it all out, a lot of times when I'm venting and I'm just like letting loose, a lot of times that's my way of processing it. Some people like to write all their thoughts and that helps them process it. Some people like to listen to their thoughts and they talk it through and then this happened and then they, you know, when they're driving or when they're sitting outside. And so a lot of times that that's a way of processing what we're feeling and going through like, oh, I forgot about that. And that's another good point. And that, oh yeah, they said that. I wonder what they meant by that. All of that inner dialogue and that chatter, when we get it out and we say it out loud, we feel better because we've kind of made sense of the crazy situation that just happened or the toxic situation or the stressful situation. It's kind of a way of sorting out the details, sorting out the nitty gritty. And just like I told my students when they were in the schools, I'd say, when you come to my office, I can't make your problems go away, but I can make them feel a little bit smaller in your life. They're still going to be there. It's not about making the problem disappear. We're just trying to get our hands around it so we can kind of manage it, so to speak, versus letting it manage us. So that's what, when you say, do you want to be heard? You just let them go all out. They could be complaining about a teacher, a coach, a friend. And in your brain, you're thinking, why are they being so negative? They need to look on the bright side. It's not that bad. They need to be a better friend. They need to be a better student. It's their fault because they didn't tell the coach how they felt 14 games ago. Now, if you've ever had a problem, when someone lets you just go and lets you vent and be heard, it feels so much better. But if we're saying things like, well, you should have talked to the coach. You should have asked her to sit by you 14 days ago. It's your fault because of, and you just need to be more positive. That's a lot of judgment. And if someone's coming at me doing that, then that's a lot of times when I shut down. So our kids are just like us. They don't want to be judged. They just want to be heard. And let them get it all out because even though they're not in the red zone, they're still in that zone of venting and that feels so good for them. And then they know that like, oh, I can talk to her and she's just a good sounding board, a good listening ear. And then they might say, I want to be helped. Like when you say, if you have a trusted relationship with this person or you're, they're saying it to you when they say helped, like something, have you been through this before? And what is a solution or what is a situation or what's something that I could try or what's a strategy? If you've been in a situation like this, how has this helped you? Like sometimes when I go to my dementia support calls, I'll be like, this is something that's going on and I need to know what to do in this situation when hygiene is an issue or eating is an issue or driving is an issue, what do you do? I need help in this situation. And so people with more experience her further down the line can say, oh, this is something that really helped me. And I can say, oh, well, that wouldn't help my loved one, but a version of that would. So it kind of opens up the lines of communication for that brainstorming. And that's what I hope you get from this podcast is normalizing all of that, that sometimes you just need to be helped Sometimes you need to be heard and sometimes you need to be hugged. And sometimes a warm hug is going to make you feel so much better. And sometimes if you're in the red zone and someone that you're upset with tries to give you a hug, you better duck because they might punch you. But it's just a way of saying you have alternate options here that I can help you, I can hear you, or I can hug you. But no matter what, your emotions with me are safe, they're valid. They're valued. You can feel vulnerable with me. And in that vulnerability breeds more vulnerability because I can be vulnerable with you back. Now, this all depends on which relationship we're talking about. Parent, child, 
this works great. Child to parent, this works great. If they can learn this skill when they're a little kid, which is very, very, very advanced, even if they're not practicing it, just that they know it even exists, they can use it in their young adult and adult relationships because this will work with their friends. This will work with their coaches. This is work with their teachers. Because a lot of times when our kids are in the red zone, we're kind of going in the red zone too or the yellow zone and we're like, whoa, I don't know how to help this situation because I'm getting heated. So you can ask yourself, do I need to be heard, helped, or hugged? Like, what do I need from this other person? So it's a way that you can also say what you need in this heated discussion. And a lot of times this conversation can happen afterwards when calm waters have prevailed. Everyone's in the calm green zone. And it's a great time to say to your kids or child, hey there, little cutie patootie, very light and fluffy energy. When this happens again, because usually our kids will default to a certain emotion. Not always, but let's just say 75% of the time you have a kid who when they get upset, they go straight to anger and rage. You might have another kid when they get upset, they go straight to fear, anxiety, crying, crying, crying. No one loves me. I'm not good enough. And they go to what we call the cold zone. If you've ever heard me talk about Be Cool, which is a program we used in elementary school, it was Be Cool about getting hot, which is when you're yelling, screaming, throwing things, punching walls, that rage comes out, throwing toys when they're younger. That's when you feel hot. And then cold emotions are more the no one loves me. I'm not good enough. You like my brother better. You like my sister better. You never loved me anyway to begin with. That's more your cold, self-pity, pouting, crying, not good enough energy. And you probably have one of those that you default to also. So when you know your kids, if they go mostly to cold or they go mostly to hot, they are going to go to either one. That's completely normal. Our job is not to keep them in the cool zone. That is not our job. Our job is to help them go from hot to cool or from cold to cool to self-regulate, to um, emotionally regulate themselves. But if we can't regulate our emotions, it's really hard to teach. So this is, what, this is why it's mostly us learning. And then once we learn it and we're practicing it, then we can teach it. Do we have to master it to teach it? Absolutely not, because we'll be waiting forever to master it because it never happens where we get to complete the mastery. We're just not so scared of those tricky emotions. We're not so scared of the cold emotions. We're not so scared of the hot emotions. We're not putting so much judgment and shame on top of ourselves and on top of our kids because they're having a basic human emotion that's tricky. We just get comfortable seeing them uncomfortable, and then we help them a lot of times after... When everyone's in calm waters, like, hey, when you go to cold emotions like that, what do you need the most? Do you need help? Do you need to be heard? Do you need to be hugged? What helps? What works for you? I want to learn more about you. Instead of go away, leave me alone, never feel those emotions, go to timeout. That's kind of the messaging we send when we're always like, go away, go away, go away when you're having a tricky emotions. It's you're telling the child the absolute opposite. These tricky emotions will come up in life, be expecting of them, be ready for them. And when they happen, is there a way that I can assist you that can help you get to cool? Or is it easier for you when you, when I exit stage left? So having that open conversation with them, if they're younger, you can kind of find that out during role playing with stuffed animals, because how they solve the problems for the animals, the stuffed animals, when they get upset is all they know of how to solve a problem. So you could be like, oh, that's curious. That's what my child went to when we were playing with puppets and the puppet got the emotion that we were talking about, the cold or the hot. And that's what my child did to help the stuffed animal. And the children will only teach what they know, what they feel. So when they're younger and they don't have the words to articulate it, that's a great way to find out. There's a little secret way to find out what helps them the most. So then you put that in your toolbox and then you know when they get hot or cold next time, this is what will help them the most. And then they know that they're not going to get in trouble for having a hot or cold emotion. They're going to know this is part of the human experience and mom or dad are there to support me and help me through it. I'm not going to get in trouble for it. Because when we're always teaching our kids that you shouldn't feel hot or cold emotions, 
then they t- are taught to suppress or the emotions get bigger and stronger because they're trying to push it down and they can't and they don't know how and they think oh my goodness if i have this emotion i'm going to get in trouble i'm going to get in time out i'm going to get punished, I'm going to get yelled at. So they're so afraid of feeling that human emotion that they feel it even stronger because they're trying to push down. Like we always talk about holding that beach ball underneath water and holding that beach ball underneath water is much harder than just letting the beach ball float on top of the water. I've seen kids do both ways where they're taught, don't feel human emotions. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. We have one, some kids who come get completely compliant and then they just shut themselves off and they never know how to feel. You might have been taught that as a as a child. So now you're a grown up. You're like, what do you mean? Emotions? I have to feel emotions? Like what? I've been taught for 18, 25, 30 years, 40 years to never feel emotions. Now you're telling me to? Are you crazy, Kelly? I actually am because you have to learn it to teach it. You don't have to master it, though. That kind of lets you off the hook a little bit. It lets me off the hook, too, because I can't master any of this. Or you have a child that is walking on eggshells and so afraid to feel a tricky emotion that when they do feel that tricky emotion, all they do is say, don't feel it, don't feel it, don't feel it, don't feel it. And if you've ever been told not to feel an emotion, it actually makes the emotion get stronger. It's kind of like me telling you, whatever you do right now, do not think of pink elephants. I don't want you to think about pink elephants no matter what. Do not think of pink elephants. What are you thinking about? Pink elephants. Because it's almost like the brain knows what not to feel and what not to do. And it's so scared to feel that. So once it feels a little rumbling of it, if you have a really touchy child and they're always crying and they're always upset or they're always in that rage mode, it's probably because they're so afraid to feel because they're going to get in so much trouble. How do I know? I've experienced it. I've been on both sides of it. So during the calm waters, during role playing with the stuffed animals, with the puppets, you can learn so much about your child. And then after the storm, you feel so connected because you help them, whether it's by hearing them, by actually helping them, giving them strategies that we've talked about in the past of like the the making of the soup or the blowing out of the candles or they're counting their name back, spelling their name backwards or counting to 10 with deep breaths or going outside, getting a stuffed animal. You've helped them and taught them what to do to emotionally regulate. Because just like we talk about in every single episode, it doesn't matter if they have straight A's, they're on the all-star team, they get a scholarship, they know 17 different languages, they know how to play like Beethoven. None of that matters if they can't regulate their emotions. So that has to be the most important thing that is the nucleus of what we teach. And then everything else is going to be a lot easier to do all those other things that we all want for our kids and whatever area that we want, or if not at all, or if the kid wants it. If a kid's an all-star on the soccer team but can't regulate their emotions when they get knocked down, kind of losing the plot there because no coach wants an all-star soccer player who can score a billion goals but then cries if they get corrected and they're not coachable. So we have to teach our kids how to be coachable because the grades, the sports, the musical instrument, none of that matters if they can't regulate their emotions to know what grit feels like, to know how to fail forward to know how to be coachable. And that starts at home. So then when they're out and about, it feels very normal for them. And then they have more harmony in their home. And they also have more harmony when they leave the home, which is eventually the goal. After 940 Saturdays, they're going to be launched into this world and they're going to be grown and flown to do whatever they want to do. And that's where you want harmony in their heart. So then they go recreate that for their relationships outside of our home. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Hey mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, you have to check out my free parenting bootcamp where we take all of this to the next level and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com and if you really want to fill up my love cup, Send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was, what was that lightning bolt moment while you were listening. I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.